Hey guys, today we are going to weigh a helicopter and compute a weight and balance on that helicopter. And again, this is for a lab for SIU Carbondale for our A&P program. And for those of you who just happen to be watching along on YouTube, this is a benefit of having a COVID situation. You get to see into classes that you wouldn't normally get to see into. By the way, we're standing in SIU Carbondale's helicopter laboratory, and this is the nation's only bachelor's degree program in um, maintenance on rotorcraft. So you can kind of take a look and see all of the different helicopters that we have, and it is a pretty cool place to, uh, to be. I want to show you a few things on the helicopters related specifically to weight and balance before we get started. What we have here is a large stack of washers, and you'll see that they're orange, painted orange, and that's because they're important. They're permanent ballast to adjust this aircraft and keep it in the weight and balance envelope. It's as far back towards the back of the helicopter as the structure will allow us to have, and we can take it loose with a bolt up here and add more washers if we needed to change where that is. Moving forward on the helicopter, I want to show you this spot right here. And this spot, although the battery box is missing, this is the spot where the battery box goes on the tail. Um, interestingly enough, this is not the only battery box spot on this helicopter. We also have a battery box up here at the nose of the helicopter. And you can see on this nose bo battery box, uh, the battery could be mounted at the nose or it could be mounted in the tail. And uh, in fact, this helicopter was intended to be flown if there was one pilot on board and no passengers, you would put the battery in the nose and it had quick disconnects. And then if you wanted to fly with uh, just a, with two people, you would take the battery out of the nose and put it back in the tail. And that would keep that weight and balance in a much more narrow, much more tight envelope. Um, speaking of weight and balance, let me show you the uh, sunlight weight and balance ballast. This Bell 206 was equipped to fly with a sunlight down at the bottom. Here's the power jack for that sunlight. Or to fly without the sunlight. And since the sunlight weighed quite a bit, when you flew without the sunlight, you would have this ballast weight right across here. It says 32 pounds to be used when sunlight is not installed. And if I open that up, I can pull this 32 pound chunk of lead. It's much heavier than it looks. There's our 32 pounds of lead, and I would take this out when I put the sunlight in. And uh, if I took the sunlight off, I'd have to re replace the ballast, and that would keep this in its weight and balance envelope. Again, a weight and balance envelope on a helicopter is a lot like a weight and balance envelope on a fixed wing airplane, except for in general, it's tighter. Now, one more thing you need to know about that weight and balance envelope on a helicopter is the weight and balance envelope on a helicopter is going to be calculated laterally and longitudinally. We got both of those going on at the same time. Um, now, we're going to be doing a weight and balance on an old Bell 47, and it's old enough that it actually didn't have a lateral weight and balance on the model that we are getting ready to do. I don't know about later models or not. So I'm going to provide some of that data, and we're going to go ahead and do both the lateral and the longitudinal. And you're going to see some data for this lab only uh, thrown into there while we do that. Let me introduce you to Loose Lady over here. Some of you are familiar with the definition of a helicopter, a group of parts in loose orbit around a vibrating machine. Um, and uh, Loose Lady is a, a fitting name for that particular definition. Uh, in that she's a, a wonderful old girl, um, beautiful, beautiful, but uh, quite aged in this case, and we want to be as nice to her as possible. One of that thing, uh, one of that things that that means is uh, let's not lean on the plexiglass bubble. Let's be careful when we jack her up into the air. Be careful when we put her back down again, and all of that kind of stuff. She is rather heavy um, compared to like a Cessna 170 uh, or a 150. So we do want to be cautious, and we are going to be using jacks. Come on over here and let me show you how we level her. All right, to level this helicopter, there are three leveling lugs, and these lugs are built right onto the uh, frame. And you can see these little dots that have been welded in place and then ground off till they're just right. And these two lugs across here are going to be used to level it in the longitudinal direction. And if I set across this lug and this lug, it's going to allow me to set a level across that and level it in the lateral direction. Now, speaking of leveling it, we're going to both jack and weigh off the hard points on the helicopter. And you can see one of those hard points right here. There's a matching one on the other side. 
that hard point is right there. And just about at the junction of the tail back here, where the, uh, where the joint is between the frame and then the boom, there's one more hard point. So there's a tail hard point and then two forward hard points that we're going to use. And we're going to both jack and weigh off of those hard points. Um, we are going to need to know where the datum is, and the datum on this helicopter is the center line of the weld cluster right across here. And so we're going to get that datum right here. Oh, and it's going to be pretty much the same as what we did when we weighed the Cessna 150. The only difference is we have to keep track of our directions two ways now. We have to keep track of our longitudinal and our lateral directions. Otherwise, she's pretty similar. All right, much like the Cessna 150, one of the most important things that we have to have is the right tools to do the job. And this is our helicopter weighing kit. And it is very similar to our other weighing kit, except instead of regular scales, we have these load cells. And these load cells are going to go directly on our jacks. So when we jack it up into the air, we're going to be able to read how much weight is on the jack. These are controlled by the control box, which is, again, very much like the last one that we used. Uh, it isn't the same as the last one we used, but it's very similar to the last one, and it's going to allow us to read what's on each scale. And um, otherwise, this is pretty much the same as the other piece of equipment that we had. Now, we're going to come up over here, see if I can knock things apart. Over here, I have a series of scales, and these scales have threaded tops to accept our load cells. And I can put a load cell on here, I can put a load cell on here, and I have an adapter to put a load sail, cell on this jack as well. In addition to that, I'm going to need a roll of tape, a tape measure, my plumb bob, something to mark with, a straight edge, and a level. And with all of that, we should be able to calculate our helicopter weight and balance. All right, so like we did last time, we need to begin by getting our weighing points. And to get our weighing points, we're going to use a plumb bob. Here's that tail weighing point, and I am going to use my plumb bob to find out what is directly below my tail weighing point. And directly below my tail weighing point, I can go ahead and mark that right on the ground. There is my tail weighing point. We're going to move our way forward. Now last time we had to do both sides of our nose wheel. We only have to make one tail weighing point, but we're going to have to get both sides of our datum and we're going to have to get both sides of our forward weighing points. So we're going to move forward. There's our forward weighing point, almost off the tape. We're going to grab the datum at the center line of the weld cluster. We're going to go with the center line of the tube that's coming downwards. There's our datum. And we're going to get those on the other side as well. So we've gotten both sides of our front points. And pulling my tape measure across both sides of the front points, I find that I have 35 inches in between the two points. Now, 35 inches is great, but 35 inches, uh, last time we asked the question, was it a plus or a minus? And this time the answer is, yes, it's a plus and a minus. In fact, we have to take that 35 and divide it in half to get our total amount on each side. So that will be 17 and a half. Our left point is at minus 17 and a half, and our right point is at plus 17 and a half. That is in the lateral direction. In the longitudinal direction, our points are 27 and a half forward. So those would be minus 27 and a half, minus 27 and a half 
in the longitudinal direction, and that's going to go for both of our forward weighing points. And in the lateral direction, my left point is at minus 17 and a half, and my right point is at plus 17 and a half. It's always wise to write these things down because that's a lot of information coming at you pretty quick. And we'll go ahead and get that information put down before we do anything past there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get me a center point across here because that center point is always extremely helpful when we want to get our rear point. So, there is my center point. And I got an oily floor, so that center point is pretty fragile, but we can work with that. My center point is directly on the keel line of the aircraft, and so I don't even need to measure it to know what its lateral dimensions are. Its lateral dimension is zero. I love that one because that one kind of drops out of our calculations when we do our lateral CG. But our longitudinal CG is not zero. Our longitudinal CG is going to be plus because it's way behind the datum. Okay, and I said it, uh, no I didn't, never mind. Plus, way behind the datum, and we're going to find out how far behind the datum in just a second. Too bad I don't have the rest of you to give me a hand. Uh, this is definitely something where more people rolling on the floor is better. Okay, and we are 68.1, plus 68.1 is our longitudinal measurement on our rear weighing point, 68.1. The next thing we need to do is we need to put our scales in place and jack this helicopter. All right, that's everything set up. So the next thing we've got to do is jack the helicopter. We have to have everything in the air to do our weight and balance. So we're going to get it up in the air. We're going to get it level again. We're going to check with the leveling lugs before we do anything. And then what you need to know about all of this is we are going to jack it exactly no higher than necessary. So while we're doing our jacking, we're done with our jacking when I can slip a piece of paper under the tail skids. We've got to obviously watch out that our fingers don't get underneath the tail skids. We've got to make sure that uh, we give it plenty of clearance. These are not the most secure jacks, so we just want to raise it up just high enough that we can get a piece of paper underneath it. That's all the higher that we need to have. We're ready to level this helicopter up in the air. And the easiest thing to do is to begin by raising the tail just a little bit. It's actually that back corner right there that tends to drag on the ground the most. So we're gonna bring this up into the air and now you can see the back ends of both skids are in the air, so uh, we don't have any problems there. Now what we're going to do is use our level on the leveling lugs, uh, both directions, and adjust our front scales until everything is level. All right, my uh, cameraman is going to be helping me, so I'm sitting back on a tripod and you can't see things as well. We are going to raise things up, but I'm going to start by slapping the level up here you can just see the level uh, right here and definitely the nose needs to come up about two inches probably somewhere in that range so we're very gingerly going to begin raising the nose and we are going to do it at the same time so pump for pump at the same time to try and keep this thing basically level so let me know when you're ready there we go and just follow along. Full pump, 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 full pump. Guys, we are airborne. All right, we are airborne as we speak. Let's check for level. Oops, drop the level. That's always good for our level. There we go. We're going to need a couple more full pumps. So let's do about, let's do four. One, two, Three, four. Fingers clear of those skids, please. Uh, still got to go a little bit more, but let's check our lateral level. Setting across the opposite lugs. We're very good on our lateral level, but I want you to do one more pump than I had. Give it another pump. One more. Okay, now we're laterally level. 
and our longitudinal level, we need about three more pumps, full pumps. One, two, and three. We are high enough in the air right now that we want to make absolutely certain our fingers stay a long ways away. We are level longitudinally, we are level laterally, and we are ready to uh, get our weight values off of our scales. All right, here's the control box, and our left forward weighing point is the yellow, uh, no, that's the green one. Left forward weighing point is the green one. And it has 489 pounds on it, as you can see. I'm going to turn off the green one. And I am going to turn on the right forward weighing point, which happens to be the yellow one. And it has 480, 478 pounds on it. Turn off the yellow one. And we are going to turn on the red one, which is our tail weighing point. And our tail weighing point is sitting at 506 pounds. And we're going to go ahead and turn off our tail weighing point. And just for the heck of it, let's get the total of all the weighing points together. And as she sits, with extra fuel and with oil on board, we are at 1473 pounds. 1472, 1473, we're gonna keep that 1473. And by the way, if you add all those to get numbers together, you should get the same number we have. If it's off by one or two, it's because of different rounding errors uh, in these scales. Each one is only accurate to the nearest pound. So if it, uh, you add something that's only accurate to the nearest pound, if you add several of them, you may have some rounding errors going on. I'm gonna turn off our scales. And then we are going to lower this helicopter before it falls on anybody. All right. So we're ready to lower our uh, helicopter. Sorry about the bad view right there. Uh, we're going to very gently lower it, and we're going to try and lower it at the same rate. Go ahead and let yours down just a little bit. And the key here is we want to keep it basically level. All right, we're down in the front. All clear. And there we are. Loose Lady has landed again. All right, just like we did last time, I am going to do a sample filling out our uh, weight and balance report. And I'm going to use the wrong data when I fill out this weight and balance report because I want you to make sure that you can fill out the weight and balance report and calculate it correctly. Um, but here I have a weight and balance report, and I have it on the computer, so mine looks a little different than yours. But this is a bell, and it was a 47D1, if I remember correctly. And we're going to say that his serial number was 512, even though it wasn't. And we're going to say that it's, um, how about we go with... Four seven Papa Papa. I like that as an end number for a helicopter, for an old helicopter. Uh, four seven Papa Papa. Of course, you can look up the real end number on this. The datum location. Why not give it the real one on this? It was the center line of the weld cluster, and we could spell center line correctly. Our weighing conditions, you'll recall, were with. Well, I'm going to do mine a little bit wrong, so I'm going to put nine gallons of usable fuel. Correct that to the right number, and you'll be good. And I am going to put eight quarts. Again, that's an error, but uh, you can fix that. Of drainable oil. Now, we also were missing the battery at uh, battery 30 pounds at minus 67 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of that in. That explains what adjustments we are going to make. Our main weighing point location was at, uh, well, I'm going to give the wrong information. I'm going to give a 28.5. Of course, you can fix that one. 28.5 on the, that would be a minus because it was in front of the datum. And on the butt line, we had a plus and minus 
and it didn't like what I just did. So let me go back to my minus 27 point, sorry, 28.5. And on my butt line, I had a plus or minus. And we're going to say it was plus or minus 18, which of course is not your real number. Location of the tail point was at zero. And on the butt line, oops, on the butt line was zero. It was on this line. We're going to say it was 69.2 um, inches. And that would have been a plus 69.2, which it doesn't like what I just did. Let's fix that again. 69.2. You got to love them. Plus. There we go. Come on, you stupid thing. Plus 69.2. There we go. Got to love your computer or hate it. I guess it just does, isn't going to let me have that plus sign on there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our values. Now, our, I'm going to say our scale values. Again, these are slightly wrong. You've got to correct them. 515... 476 and 536. That's what I'm going to put in here. We're going to put a tear of 0, 0, and 0, giving us a net weight uh, of just what the scale weight was. And that should be good for all of that. We are going to make an adjustment for fuel. We are going to make an adjustment for oil. And we are going to make an adjustment for the battery. Um, our fuel is, we said nine gallons, of course that's wrong, but that would be 72 pounds at six pounds per gallon. And it's negative because it's coming off. We're going to take off 15 pounds of oil and we are going to add 30 pounds of battery. Now on our arms, we can do our looking around for these, uh, but on our, this is our longitudinal arm. So our Main weighing points, we're at minus 28.5, minus 28.5, and that's 5, not 5, 6. Got to love the fat finger syndrome. And then we had a 69.2 for our arm on our main thing. Now, I can look across my data that I find in the lab, and I can find that my adjustment for my fuel should be made at... Uh, the usable fuel arm was at 24 longitudinally, and the adjustment for the oil is at um, plus 5, and the adjustment for the battery was at minus 67. There it is, minus 67. And now we've got everything we need for our longitudinal weight and balance. I'm going to get my moments. My moment is equal to my net weight times my arm. And the beauty of doing it on the computer is I can pull all that down and it'll do all the calculations for me. And now I want to sum all of that. And there it is. And I am going to sum all of this. And there it is. And I am going to make this one equal to that divided by that, which gives me a CG arm of 3.424966. It's ridiculously precise. We're going to say she's 3.4. Um, now what we want to do is we want to calculate all of this stuff across the bottom. We want to do the lateral weight and balance. And the key about the lateral weight and balance is everything is the same except for the arms. So I'm going to copy all of this data, control C, and I am going to put it down here, control V. Do you want to replace the destination cells? Yes, indeed I do. Now, this is not a lateral weight and balance. This is a longitudinal weight and balance because of where the arms are. The only thing that's different between lateral and longitudinal is those arms. Here we have the station that was la uh, longitudinal, but we need butt line, which is lateral. And our left main, left is negative. It was at minus, I said 18. Of course, you have to put in the right number for our helicopter. And plus 18 for our right main, and our tail was right on the zero. All right, so that gets us ready for the top, but we have to get everything on the bottom as well. Now, luckily for us, 
the fuel is right on the center line, the oil is right on the center line, and the battery is right on the center line. And that gives us this huge amount of zeros going on here. We're going to click our auto sum again. And we are going to click our auto sum again. Our weight is the same, 1470, same top and bottom across here, 1470. But our moment is hugely different between these two. And we need to make sure that we get our lateral weight and balance, which is that number, divided by this number, giving us minus 0.477. All right, or we're going to round that to minus 0.48, minus 0.48 to give us our total answer. Uh, actually, we're going to round it to minus 0.5. That would be the same level we rounded to on the last one. Fat finger syndrome again, same exact keys I misstruck. All right, so now that gets us ready to calculate everything correctly when we are done. This is our empty weight right across here, and uh, 1470 after adjusted for everything, and we're ready to go. Our max allowable gross weight, we have to move over to the type certificate data sheet to find out what our max allo allowable gross weight is, and I'm going to give you a wrong value for that. You can look up the correct one. I'm going to say we're allowed 2,800 pounds, and I guarantee you that is not correct. But if that were correct, our answer would be the 2,800 pounds minus the empty weight, and that would give us 1,330 pounds of useful load. Your useful load will be much lower than that. Finally, the last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to sign our report. Our report computed by, in my case, Don Morris. And my A&P number is A&P278. Since we're doing all wrong numbers, I'll make that wrong too. And sure, let's make the date wrong as well. Let's say that this happens to be 3-12-76. How about that? All right, or now nah, let's yeah that, that's good enough. We'll do we'll we'll deal with that. So this would be our complete report, and of course you have to make that complete report. You also have to answer all of the questions, and that will conclude our calculate a helicopter weight and balance report. So there's one more thing that I want to show you, and that is uh, plotting this helicopter on the weight and balance envelope. So you can see all the uh, questions that you need to answer after you've calculated your weight and balance report or perhaps before you've calculated your weight and balance report. Um, look over the video. You can see a lot of different things on the video. But uh, one of the things that I need you to do is make sure that you are plotting that CG on the axis across the front page. This is the most common thing that people don't do on this lab. So as you can see here over here, we have a spot to plot the CG, and our CG is allowed to be between minus 2.0 on the longitudinal to plus 2.9, and on the lateral, it's minus 2.4 to plus 2.4 and we need to plot where ours is and I take a look across here and I find that my longitudinal CG is at plus 3.4 which is right down here where my pointer is and then it is at minus 0.5 which is right down here and you can see where my little cursor shows up I don't have a way of putting a point on this on my screen but this is where I would put my little dot and I would check to see is that dot in inside the CG limits. Um, if it is inside the CG limits, I'm good to go fly. As you can see, mine is outside the CG limits, and I suspect yours will be as well, but I don't know that for sure. Um, so check and see. Check and see whether it's inside the CG limits or outside of the CG limits. If it is outside of the CG limits, I want to tell you a reason why. Remember, this thing is intended to have a pilot sitting up front when it goes and flies. And without the pilot sitting up front, I'm going to expect its CG is going to be quite a bit farther aft 
than where the pilot sits. So I would expect an empty helicopter would have its CG aft of that rear CG limit. That would be pretty normal. Make sure you put a dot on this chart showing me what its longitudinal CG is and its lateral CG. And that concludes everything that I need to say about this lab other than go do it and ask questions live if you need to.